Hi friends, it's Pastor Angel, and I'm so glad that you could join me today. We are talking about confidence, and confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Like always, we're gonna be doing some worship, and we're gonna be doing a Bible story. Are you guys ready? I know I am. Come on, let's go. That's how I'm feeling It's impossible For me believing That I can't, that I won't Make it happen Just watch what I got All the strength that I have in me I'm going to stay You're the best around. Not gonna be what you're good to do. Hey everybody, my name is Graham, and today I'm following in the groundbreaking footsteps of my ancestors. I'm making a mixtape. You see, back in olden times, when someone wanted to listen to music, they needed one of these cassette tapes. And if you were fortunate enough to have one of these dual cassette recorders with high-speed dubbing, you could put up to 90 minutes of your favorite songs onto one rad mixtape. I'm making this mixtape for my friend Erica, who's been running a lot of 5Ks lately. The Eye of the Tiger. And I'm only picking super encouraging songs. That way, Erica will have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be simpler just to make a playlist that Erica could listen to on her phone? Maybe, but this is all a part of the plan. My plan is to give this mixtape to Erica so she can listen to it while she's running. She probably doesn't have a tape player, 
so, so she'll borrow mine. And if she carries this thing around with her everywhere, she'll build up arm strength. Oh, I didn't say it was a good plan. Oh man. Another one bites the dust. Sometimes plans don't work out the way you expect. But as you'll see in today's story, sometimes there's a bigger and better plan. Oh, gotta switch to side two, I guess. How did people even survive back then? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Joshua, chapters five and six. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert. At last, they reached the land that God had promised them. Joshua led them to the edge of the rushing Jordan River. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was a beautiful chest that reminded the Israelites that God was with them. As soon as the priests step into the Jordan, it will stop flowing. Sure enough, as soon as the foot of the first priest touched the edge of the river, the waters parted. God's people crossed on dry land, just as God had led them through the Red Sea 40 years before. God did this so that all the nations on earth would know that He is powerful. Soon after, the Amorites and Canaanites living in the land had heard what God had done. Fearful, they retreated back to their towns, including the high-walled city of Jericho. Oh, great. Like, how do we fight them now? God will show us the way. That evening, Joshua left camp and snuck toward Jericho. The walls loomed impossibly strong. So tall. As he turned, Joshua saw a man standing nearby holding a sword. Who are you? Uh, are you on our side or the side of our enemies? I have come as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua knelt down, face to the ground. What message does my Lord have for me? Take off your sandals. The place you are on is holy ground. Joshua tugged off his shoes. I have handed Jericho over to you. Joshua listened carefully as the Lord delivered a message, a battle plan unlike any other. Wow, uh, okay, uh, we'll do it, Lord. Joshua called for the priests. Get the Ark of the Covenant, and I need seven of you to march in front of the Ark with trumpets. Sorry, just warming up. <laughs> Joshua gathered the army too. Time to move out. <laughs> like, do we get to attack now? March around the city. Just like go in circles? Some of you march ahead of the Ark of the Lord and the rest of you march behind. Can we at least shout and stuff? Hey, Jericho, you guys smell like cheese. Don't give a war cry or raise your voices until the day I tell you to shout. But the priests must blow their trumpets. Forward. March! The entire army, including the priests, marched one time around Jericho, just as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Now can we get them? Back to camp, men. We march again tomorrow. The next morning, the Israelites marched around the city once again. And then on day three, once again on day four, not to mention day five, and once again on day six. We march again at sunrise. Uh, I have blisters. At dawn on the seventh day, the army and priests formed their strange parade once more. But this time, once they finished marching around the city one time, Joshua called out. Keep marching. Again? My feet are killing me. The Lord has told me we must march around the city seven times today. On the seventh time around, the priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Now shout! The Lord has given you the city! Oh, 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 yes. oh, geez. As the shouts of the Israelites rang out in the clear morning air, something incredible happened. The massive walls of Jericho began to tremble. The gates shivered and quaked. Jagged cracks ran through the heavy stones. Rocks began to tumble from the tops of the walls. 
little rocks, large stones, giant boulders, until at last the walls collapsed, crashing in on themselves. The ground quaked and plumes of dust burst into the air. As the air cleared, the Israelites stared in amazement. The city of Jericho stood wide open. Take the city! With nothing standing in their way, the Israelites charged right in. That day, they completely defeated the city of Jericho. God was with Joshua, and he became well-known everywhere in the land. When God told Joshua to take over the city of Jericho, Joshua probably thought of a battle plan. And I bet his battle plan didn't involve marching around the city wall for a week blowing trumpets. But Joshua followed God, and the Israelites took the city. He had confidence that God's plan was bigger and better. And that's not the only time God proved his plan was better. When Jesus, God's son, died on the cross, Jesus' disciples had to wonder, what is God thinking? Then in three days, when Jesus came back to life, it all became clear. God's plan is always better. The truth is, none of us know what the future holds. Your family might have to move out of the neighborhood or out of the state. You might get sick or break a bone. You might not get put on the team you tried out for. But when things don't go according to your plan, that's when you need to remind yourself, God's got you. You may not always know what God's plan is, but keep following him and have confidence that his plan is bigger and better. That's the one thing to remember today. God's plan is the best plan. My plan to make a mixtape for Erica is not the best plan. But it's still a lot of fun. Ah, oh. Oh no, it's unraveled. Oh wait, no worries. I've got an idea. Huh? Just like my ancestors. I'll see you next time. time of worship in a Bible story, we learned about Joshua, who was the leader of God's people, and he led them into the promised land. But once they got across the river, they were faced with the city of Jericho, and they didn't know what to do. So an angel of the Lord came and gave Joshua God's battle plan. So they marched around the city of Jericho every day for six days. And on the seventh day, they marched around seven times and blew trumpets and then shouted, and when they were done marching, the walls crumbled and the city was defeated and they were able to go on to the promised land. Joshua did what God asked him, even though he didn't understand it. Joshua had confidence in what God could do if he just listened and was obedient to God's plan. The one thing I want you guys to remember today is God's plan is the best plan. We may think we know what we want and we may think we know what to do, but if we ask God for what's best, he always gives us the best plan. So remember, God's plan is the best plan. All right, are you guys ready for the memory verse? Like always, we're gonna do it three times. The first time, you're gonna repeat after me and we're gonna do it slowly. The second time, we're gonna do it all together. And the third time, you guys are gonna do it on your own. All right, are you guys ready? On three. One, two, three. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 27, 13. Great job, now let's do it all together on three. One, two, three. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalms 27, 13. All right, great job. Now it's your guys' turn to do it on your own. Are you ready? I'm gonna to count to three and you guys can be really loud, okay? One, two, three.
Great job, guys. I'm so proud of you. Remember, God's plan is the best plan. I'll see you next time. Love you. Bye.